Stewart, one of the ways that uh, psychologists um, over the many decades have studied consciousness is by studying altered states of consciousness, drug-induced, uh, dreaming, uh, uh, various types of meditative states. Uh, from your work uh, as an anesthesiologist as well as a, a consciousness theoretician, um, what do you sense about how altered states work and do they really help elucidate consciousness? If we consider altered states in meditation, it was shown a number of years ago that uh, uh, monks who meditate, uh, their gamma synchrony goes from say 40 to 80 and maybe even higher, high gamma. So they're kind of moving up the frequency scale. And I think in drug-induced altered states, psychedelics for example, uh, they also shift uh, the uh, quantum vibrations in the microtubules to a higher frequency range. For example, uh, from megahertz to gigahertz. Now, the evidence for that goes back to the 70s with Kang and Green and Snyder and uh, those people who looked at a series of psychedelic drugs and correlated their potency with a physical parameter, namely the ability of the drug to donate electron resonance energy to their receptor, whatever they were bonding to. So in other words, they, the more potent a drug was in, in donating electron resonance energy, which is essentially quantum energy, to its receptor, uh, the more potent it was. So what, now these drugs, uh, the, 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 they're thought to act at uh, serotonin receptors, for example, LSD and those types of drugs, but we've also shown that they bind to tubulin, to microtubules. And uh, they're nonpolar, they will definitely get in, inside the cell and increase the resonances and shift the frequency to a higher level. So, so what's the significance of shifting the frequency to a higher level? More intense experience, uh, more conscious moments per time, more quantum non-locality so that you're interconnected with, uh, with other consciousness perhaps out there and with, even with the universe at large. Why is that the case? Why would higher frequency indicate a higher degree of consciousness? More non-locality, more interconnectedness. By e equals h over t, you're shifting to a greater e to a shorter t, and it's like going to a higher, uh, higher frequency uh, photon from an infrared to a UV. So uh, it's, it's higher frequency and, and more non-local. Uh, you're, you're stating that, but I, I, it, it's not like intuitively obvious why. Maybe I'm just dull here. But well, I, more of the brain, for example, you know, w w like 10% with normal consciousness, megahertz, maybe to 20, 30, 40, or even a higher kind of more of the brain. Now, interestingly enough, parado seemingly paradoxically, there was a, a study a year ago uh, presented, or a couple years ago presented at the Tucson conference from uh, uh, David Nutt's group and uh, uh, Kirsten Harris in, in uh, uh, Carhartt Harris, excuse me in England where they gave uh, psilocybin, the active ingredient psilocybin mushrooms, intravenously, because they wanted to get it right away, and put these people in an fMRI scanner. They expected, I think they expected, the brain to light up like a pinball machine while these people were tripping, in the, as they reported later. Instead, what they found was that the fMRI was cold and dark, not quite brain dead, but at a very, very low uh, level of activity. They did EEG and MEG, and it was also almost flatlined. Now, this was astounding to them and, and almost embarrassing because they couldn't explain it. What I think is happening in that situation is the consciousness is going to a deeper level. Uh, the membranes uh, can be silent. You don't need the membranes uh, to be conscious. You go to a deeper level into the microtubule, having more conscious uh, moments uh, in the quantum resonance at a higher frequency. Now, the membranes are silent. Cognition is not happening. So these people, you know, laying in the scanner having these uh, uh, intense experiences or anybody under the influence of these drugs may not have the best cognition. You wouldn't want them driving you home, for example. The membranes are silent. You don't need energy. Uh, you don't need enhanced blood flow. So EEG and fMRI are down, but consciousness is at an extremely high level. So the correlation between, ener between consciousness and, and energy consumption is, is, not, is not linear. In fact, it's, it's, it's somewhat... Uh, Disconnected. And that would, that would show a discontinuity between consciousness and cognition. Correct. And so you're saying cognition is relating to the neuronal impulse more and consciousness is something that is not needing the neural, neuronal impulse, uh, according to your theory. Yeah, normally they're connected, but they don't need to be. And, 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 this, and, and the altered states through drugs, through this data, which you say would back that up. Yes. Yeah, it goes back to the 70s, and it's consistent with our theory, and we've shown and are continuing to work on the notion that, that uh, the psychoactive drugs uh, act, at, act on uh, microtubules by enhancing uh, quantum resonances and shifting the frequency. And I think other, even, uh, you know, tricyclic antidepressants uh, for depression, they take several weeks to work. Although their membrane effects are immediate, it takes several weeks 
for them to uh, recycle and uh, reorganize the cytoskeleton. Now that's not necessarily a quantum effect, but the point is that the, that the microtubules in the cytoskeleton, the dendrites and the soma, uh, are where uh, mood and, 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 and information are stored relevant to consciousness. So drugs like, like uh, antidepressants also work on the cytoskeleton, although not directly on the quantum effects. Uh, any uh, benefit in studying dreaming? I think dreaming is is more quantum information. You know, there was a uh, uh, Jose uh, Mate Blanco, uh, Arge an Argentine uh, psychiatrist, analyzed the logic of dreams, and he found that it wasn't uh, the logic that we see in in classical physics, but it was more quantum logic, or or in in retrospect, looks exactly like quantum logic. And where the, you have the non commutation Activity thing that uh, A times B doesn't uh, yeah, yeah, and B, yeah, B times yeah, yeah. A that sort of thing. It follows the laws of quantum cognition. So dreaming is <laughs> is quantum logic. I think <laughs> dreaming is quantum superposition that may not reach collapse as uh, much. And, and, and it's it's not just no logic at all. It, 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 there's a there's a there's a quantum logic. I see. Well, I'll have to remember that tonight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe it'll be revealing for you. <laughs>